I think in the mountains we are like really protective of each other. We're really protective of our families. And I'm, I mean, there are definitely, I think, some examples of families just disowning people, which is like totally unacceptable and just devastating. But I think most of the time families get over it and they just kind of are more protective of each other. And like, this is our gay. <laughs> like, like, no one's going to talk about them. They're ours. Like, this is our family. We, you know, we are who we are, whatever. They just end up accepting each other and protective. My mom's really protective of my sister. I, I think my aunts have meant said things about my sister being gay. And my mom's like, hey, my kids are all, they all have a good education. They don't have kids. They're not on drugs. They're, they're living life to the fullest. What do you have to say for your kids? Before I came out, um, I didn't know a gay person at all. So the only thing I knew about gay people were stereotypical gay guy, which would be flamboyant, you know, love shopping and cooking and all that stuff. And I was the complete opposite of that. I had always been this person who um, was kind of a model student. You know, I always made straight A's and um, I was really involved with student activities. And so people kind of, I had like this reputation of like the good girl and um, um, on the right track kind of thing and so I was really worried that um, when all this came out that uh, it would harm that reputation I think and people would think a lot differently of me when nothing had changed really it was just I was kind of coming coming into who I was supposed to be. My best friend was um, a gay guy and high school was an interesting time um, because Somehow I ended up in a group of mostly homosexual people, but I did not identify that way. And I had various boyfriends throughout high school, but I, I think everyone thought I was gay. <laughs> when I was in college, my sister came out and she was going to that high school. And so she didn't have that good of a time. My friends didn't have a very good time. Um, coming out at Bell High wasn't the easiest thing to do. <laughs> um, well, I have an older brother, so. Me and him was always fighting. My dad was always be tough, you know, all this. So growing up, it was, it was kind of rough because I, I always had to, to challenge my manhood because if not, then my dad would be like, you pussy, you queer, you know, all this stuff. A lot. And uh, I couldn't do that. So and then I got into football and that helped me release my anger a lot. I did not come out, as they say, until my senior year in high school. I was 18 years old, and um, uh, when that happened, I, I um, well, I was friends with this girl. I was friends with another lesbian who um, had been out since she was um, 14, I think. She was in eighth grade, and so I was friends with her all through high school, and um, <clears throat> Uh, we started dating in my senior year. So when that happened, I um, kind of did the whole typical, you know, tell your parents, tell your friends, tell your, everybody in your circle. You know, I know so many gay guys around here and gay people, and they're terrified to come out of the closet. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that. To the point to where they're on drugs, they kill themselves, they're, they're going around and meeting God knows who, and hooking up with them just because they, they can't be their self and have a normal relationship and this is the only way they can get attention. I think mostly people just kind of ignored it, I guess. Um, it was the last semester of my senior year, so everybody was kind of focused on graduation and all that kind of stuff and colleges and trying to get the last little bit of their classwork done. So I just think that people really didn't care that much. The gay people that I grew up with who are still in East Kentucky are not happy. I mean, I definitely know queer folks in East Kentucky that are happy and um, have, have accepted that they want to be here and they are going to sacrifice some things in order to stay here close to family and still be happy. I never got to go on dates that I wanted to. I never got to get my first kiss when I was 16, you know, I never when I was 16, I got my license. You know how people are excited. Oh, I want to go on a date and I get to take my girlfriend. I never got to do that. I thought about 
going into the Marines for a way out. And then I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fight for a country that I can't even get married in. I'm not going to do that. Religion is pretty deep-seated here in Eastern Kentucky, and it's, it's a really big part of a lot of people's lives. Um, and there are a lot of preachers around, I know, who preach against uh, homosexuality in very graphic, kind of like, um, terrible ways. <laughs> and it kind of just uh, propagates these stereotypes about homosexuals and um, uh, maintains this fear among people that you know they just don't understand and they're not willing to understand and there's more people who are who are stepping up and coming out and saying you know this is who I am I'm not a bad person like I go to church every Sunday or whatever you know we're just people like everybody else and I think more people are starting to realize that and are starting to understand that it's it's not wrong like it's just we're just people. When I moved back here, I was in, I was in a, a group in, in Charleston, West Virginia. It's called Empowerment. I come back here, and the, you know, and I realized, you know, there's there's nothing here for gay people at all. There's no support system. There's no, there's nothing. And back in, you know, back in West Virginia, you have, you have sponsors. You have groups. You have, I mean, you have Pete Flag. You have all this stuff. All all this amazing stuff that people, you know, can come to and ask questions and and you know to have a shoulder to lean on. And there's nothing here. You can go up in, in Lexington and Louisville and they have all that up there. But there's nothing here back in the mountains at all. So I moved back here and when I did, I, I decided to create a, a group called Reach Out. I want, I want to be able to start a chapter in Hazard and Pikeville and Norton and this and that. But I got to meet more people and all this stuff. People that I can trust to do it, you know, this and that. Um, I'm trying to get, I've been trying to get sponsors. Um, to help me out, but that's really hard when you're in a Bible Belt place. I mean, you can't really do much about it. If I were to go down there right now where my grandpa lives and talk to him about this, he would probably, I don't know, explode. I don't know. Um, but I know, you know, I can talk to my eight-year-old nephew about it, and he's just kind of like, hmm, okay, yeah. Like, he understands, you know, he gets it that, you know, it's not something to be feared. It's not something to be ashamed of or you know, not want to talk about or um, hate or whatever. I'm really against gay people segregating themselves from the rest of society, um, most specifically heterosexual people, because I think, you know, that's kind of what they've done to us for a long time, so we shouldn't propagate that. We shouldn't allow that to continue. We should be the ones to step forward and say, you know, we're, we're just, we're going to be in the society with you. We're going to work with you to be people, I don't know. Um, but I tell people, you know, it's a really small part of my life. It's it's just one aspect of who I am. You know, I'm also, I also like to read. I'm also a writer. I'm also a student. I'm also an Appalachian, and which that means a whole lot more to me than, than being gay. I mean, it's just, um, it's just who I love. It's, it's, it's not as if um, my parents walk around all day saying, oh, hey, I'm straight. <laughs> you know, like, it's not a big deal. It's just a part of who I am. It's a part of what makes me, me.